Over the past four years and 471 episodes, our show has brought students LGBTQ education because we fully understand classrooms around the world don't teach the basic things we need to learn. In America alone, where we call ourselves the greatest country on earth, we implement the standardized testing structure where educators are forced to teach things just so their students can pass a simple test. And how well those students do on that test determines how much the educators are paid the following school year. So it's in the educator's best interest just to stick to the standardized method. But that standardized method leaves a lot out of the classroom. As kids grow up, they don't know how to do their taxes, balance a checkbook, budget their home life, how to do their laundry, make dinner for their families, how to save for retirement, or figure out what benefits are good for their future jobs. Classes on home economics, health, and family planning are constantly the first programs cut from schools. If it was in the best interest for their students, all of these programs would be in every school worldwide. Instead, it's in the best interest of the taxpayer, because the school has to spend far too much money on the standardized testing system. So for many students, it becomes a place like YouTube, where they can learn basic things, like how to change the tire on their car, or how to go grocery shopping. And in some ways, that's why I love my job so much here, in helping these kids learn basic LGBTQ things, like how valid and perfectly normal it is to be lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, aspectrum, and so on. It's my job to teach millions of kids the history, health, science, literature, home economics, geography, religion, math, art, music, and more, all relating to the LGBTQ community. It's my job because, frankly, schools are failing to do theirs. In some states in America, it's illegal to even mention homosexuality in the classroom. In some countries, being gay or trans could mean you'll be put to death by the government. My point is that with my years of experience being an LGBTQ educator and seeing over 4.1 million students come to my classroom as of the date of this recording, I'm here to tell you how desperately needed this education is and how desperately afraid our governments are of providing it because it might make some kids out there feel normal or validated. This past month, my team and I produced 20 history lessons in celebration of International LGBTQ History Month in October. For the past three years, we've been producing these episodes. In seasons two and three of our show, we produced 31 history lessons each October. Our job was far from easy. Finding out who was LGBTQ, figuring out the facts of a historical event, or finding out how accepted our community was in a certain era of history was no simple task. Even with the vastness of the internet, reading all of the history books we can get our hands on, and with some of the most highly qualified researchers and reporters in the area working for us, trying to find this info was still very difficult. That's because the society we all live in has purposefully hidden many documents, letters, and facts from the public eye. We've had comments from people who are dumbfounded over the facts we present, and other viewers will never believe certain episodes no matter how much evidence we put in front of them. The sad reality we live in, as educators, is that many people won't believe us because the truth was hidden from our viewers and students far too long. We are at the end of a generational war on education, and even though I always want to see the glass half full, I sit here and realize that we are losing that war. Teams like ours can uncover the stories of amazing LGBTQ people like Matthew Shepard, Randy Wicker, Baron Friedrich von Steuben, Baird Rustin, Christine George Jensen, Oscar Wilde, Sally Ride, Craig Rodwell, and more. We can uncover the true stories of the Compton Cafeteria or Stonewall Riots. We can show you how accepted being LGBTQ was in ancient Rome or in the Civil War. We can uncover the truth that Jesus Christ, George Washington, and more were all homosexuals. But no matter how much work we put in, there is only so much documentation to be found. Our production crew 
will go into meetings this next year and debate whether or not we can produce 20 or more episodes of History Facts next October for next season. Not because we don't have the budget or the time, but because we're struggling to find stories that weren't covered up. Schools, governments, and faith organizations covered over so many amazing parts of history in an organized, purposeful, and targeted effort to undermine the LGBTQ and black rights movements. They didn't want us to feel normal, and in many ways, they sort of won. I sit here as a gay man who went through this half-hearted education system myself in America, knowing I had to assemble a team of researchers a decade after graduating college to finally learn how normal my own sexuality is and learn how many great people came before me fighting for my rights to love freely. It always baffles my mind how easy it is for schools to forget that 11.7% of their classrooms are made up of LGBTQ kids. At times over these past four years doing this show, I've tried convincing myself that schools were trying their best, but sadly after hundreds of episodes and millions of comments and stories shared with me, I can't help but feel that it's not the homophobes in class who are bullying these kids. It's the government itself who is the real bully here by not allowing these kids to see representations of themselves in their classrooms. As I end this wonderful history series for what could be the final time on our show, with over 80 history lessons being taught, I feel compelled to share with you how difficult this journey was for us. And now that we've gone through that journey, I understand that for many educators out there, you might have seen this giant task and not had enough time to tackle it or not had the budget we had to follow each lead to its end. But we've done all the hard work for you now, and we continue to do that hard work every single day behind the scenes of our show. All of these lessons are here for you now, and they are all completely free to use. If you want easy access to all of them, you can go to our website at prideclassroom.com. There you can find our playlist for coming out advice, overcoming depression series, LGBTQ basics, parenting advice, gay, bisexual, transgender, a-spectrum, closeted advice, LGBTQ history, health, science, literature, home economics, geography, religion, math, art, music, relationship advice, and furry fandom advice. You can find our courses to help you start a Gender Sexuality Alliance Club in your school with free downloadable resources. You can find a playlist of our courses on how to improve your school or your classroom to make it more LGBTQ friendly. And in the coming months, you'll be able to take our courses, which give you Act 48 credits. To put it bluntly, there are no more excuses. We've shown the Department of Education of every country worldwide how much LGBTQ education can be provided with a minimal budget and limited resources. If it wasn't for our limited budget here, now would be a perfect moment to simply drop the mic and walk away. But my job is not over when the school bell rings and the kids go home. I'll be back next week with more LGBTQ lessons on other subjects, because I know when these kids go home, they are in just as much danger of discrimination. But in the meantime, from one educator to another, please use these resources that we've created here on our YouTube channel and share them in your classrooms worldwide. Please show your kids out there how normal they are for being LGBTQIA and show the straight and cisgender kids how normal their classmates are too. I know how important each child is to you because I've stood in the front of that classroom as well. So while we do have courses showing you how to make big changes in your school districts to help the entire school, I'm asking you to at least help just the kids in your classroom this year. Be the inspiration these kids need, and if you need help doing that, then you can comment down below and we'll try to help you however we can. As for now, I am Professor Pride. Thank you so much for joining us for our third annual LGBTQ History Month. See you next week, have a gay day everyone, and bye for now.